Are you trying to figure out how to make your watercolor animals look really soft? In today's video, we're going to see if we can paint the softest and fluffiest fur on this little Pomeranian puppy using watercolors. Now, my reference photo is from Pixabay. I'll leave a link in the description to that if you want to try this painting for yourself. First of all, if you want to achieve the same soft effects you're going to be seeing in this video, there are two crucial supplies you'll need. First, you'll want to make sure you're using 100% cotton watercolor paper. I'm using my favorite Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper, and this is a five by seven inch block. Cheaper papers, which tend to be made from wood pulp, just respond to the water and paint differently and they just won't work as well. So set yourself up for success by using good paper. For more information about the different kinds of watercolor papers, check out this video. The second thing you'll want is one or two brushes that can hold a really fine point. I'll be using my favorite LeBenzin handmade bamboo handle brushes. Let me just show you the two brushes I'll be using in this video. This is a small diameter brown synthetic bristle brush with a three quarter inch bristle. And this one is a one inch small stiff white synthetic brush. Now one common issue you can have when painting tiny details like little bits of fur is that your hand can cramp up and get tired while you're painting those little details. These bamboo handles are so comfortable and my hand never cramps while using these. Okay, we're going to approach this fuzzy fur using five steps. Step one, do a really light sketch. Start by sketching on the puppy using the lightest lines you can manage. The reason you don't wanna to press too hard is you wanna be able to erase the lines when you're done and you don't want them to be visible under the paint, especially if they go against the direction of the fur. Step two, do some first washes in the fur. This will be wet and wet. To produce the softest edges, I use the wet and wet technique. This involves wetting the paper with clean water before dropping in the paint. I have three important tips for your first wash. Number one, pre-mix your paint colors so that you can dive in with paint immediately. If you skip this step, your paper will begin to dry and you might actually miss the opportunity to paint the softest edges. My second tip is to extend your clean water quite a bit beyond your edges. Wherever the paper is wet, the paint will go. So if you paint up to the edge of a wet area, you'll still end up with hard edges. By extending the damp area further than where you want to paint, this will allow the paint to soften out without forming any hard lines. My third tip is be careful to control how much water is in your brush. This will prevent blooms or puddles. Make sure you have a paper towel or a rag on hand to blot with so that you can always be double checking that you don't have too much water. Now, if you feel like maybe this video is moving a little too fast, I wanna let you know that this Pomeranian tutorial is available in real time. Just head over to my website, emilyolsonart.com, where you can become a member of my Watercolor Mastery online school. With this monthly membership, you'll have access to over 100 fully narrated real-time tutorials, including this one, which come with a downloadable reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies used in each video. There are tutorials for all levels, from beginners to advanced, and I add new videos every month. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. Step three, begin to add fur texture details. This is wet and dry. Now this step takes the longest, but it's also where you get to start filling out all the fuzzy texture of the animal you're painting. One technique I like to use with my synthetic brown LeBenzin brush is to allow the bristles to separate slightly, then lay down quick brush strokes like this. I work in sections, mostly moving in parallel motion, but always following the direction I see the fur growing in the reference photo. Where there is less detail in the reference, or if I need to darken an area, I use broader brush strokes. And where there are more complex textures, I make sure to leave tiny gaps between brush strokes so that we get a sense of variety in the lights and darks of the fur. Now, if you just aren't sure what colors to use, just ask yourself, do I see more brown here or more blue or more red or more yellow? Create mixtures based on this. I used mostly burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for this dog's fur, which really allowed me to adjust easily between warm and cool browns and grays. Oh, really quick, if you're finding this video helpful, please hit that like button right now. It really helps me out as a creator to be able to continue bringing you free content like this. Step four, build values with more wet washes. This step actually works hand in hand with step three. Often you'll need to alternate between adding layers of wet on dry fur texture and blocking in larger shapes and values using broad wet washes. Here on the head, I needed a darker reddish brown base color. So I painted that quickly with a wet and dry flat wash over the top of some of my fur detail. 
Once that dries, you can go back in and just keep layering with the fur. I added a wet wash using more of a bluish gray to the underside of the head and chest. Again, all with the same intention of allowing that to dry and then layering over the top of it. When a large area has a damp layer of paint on it, you can also use that opportunity to add more wet and wet color to a section especially if you want a softer, more subtle blending of colors. Here on the body, I added some burnt sienna wet and wet to the gray base wash. Notice how I still move my brush in the direction the fur is growing. I guarantee you're going to reach several stages in a painting like this where you're going to want to just throw it out. Don't do that. Don't give up. Just trust the process and keep painting. You'll be so glad you did. The last step is to keep layering the details wet on dry. This final step is to add your darkest details, such as the eyes, nose, muzzle, and any additional layers of fur texture. I use my more pointed Lebenzin Small Stiff White Synthetic Brush for the facial details, being careful to leave little highlights. For the highlights, I generally like to allow the white of the paper to show through, so this does take careful negative painting around those areas. The rest of the painting is really a process of combining additional wet washes with careful dry brush details. Adjust your values by mixing in water to paint lighter areas, but always check how much water is on your brush or blot on a paper towel before applying it to your painting. The number one mistake beginning watercolor artists make is to have too much water either on their paper or on their brush or both. Painting detailed fur requires a steady hand, high quality tools, and lots of patience. Don't be discouraged if your first attempt doesn't turn out. Watercolor takes practice and dedication, so keep at it. Leave me a comment below if you found this video helpful and hit that like button. Check out these other videos all about painting realistic animals and watercolor, and I'll see you there.